You met in 2000, yeah. and uh, this was online. What was the attraction? Um, well, I was a single mum, so um, this was a, a calm, collected, intelligent, sophisticated, charming man. I mean, what wouldn't be the attraction? <laughs> well, it was online initially, and it didn't take long before you met up, it was physical, yeah. then it was a full-blown relationship. Yeah, I mean, we met within about two weeks of, uh, of speaking online, and it was in 2000, it was very early days in, in online dating, mm. so it wasn't to, it was, I was just trying it out to see what happened. Um, and, uh, yeah, no, but it's, it's... So alarm bells began to ring, really, for you, because he would... He he would disappear for, for sort of periods of time, yeah. wouldn't he? Yeah. And how did he explain that away? Well, he initially said that he was um, uh, an IT consultant and so he was working away all the time. But um, within about six months of the relationship, he... Uh, it's very difficult to explain this because it's, it's such a complicated story, but uh, he explained to me that he actually worked with the intelligence services. So he, he wasn't a spy. He was one of the IT guys who helped support the intelligence services. So um, he was quite often called away at short notice and... And I wouldn't be able to talk to me. So that was. Well, you, you well, felt. I explained it. Yes. Yeah. You felt pregnant, and uh, and he. I mean, could, because he cancelled the wedding, missed the birth of your first child, because he said he was in Palestine, uh, came back with injured feet, which he then found yeah. out later on he done to himself. Um, but um, but when when you felt pregnant, you tracked him and and and, and got him to a, a house with lots of children's toys in it. Yeah, it's um, as I say, it's a very complicated story. But uh, yeah, I, I found that that's how he how he decided to tell me that he he worked for the intelligence services because I'd found this house uh, and he'd managed to sit me down and say, look, you don't have to believe anything that I tell you right now, but, you know, this is what I do. And I was recruited out of college and showed me the website, showed me various things. And he said, all of it will be proved in time. And it was, basically. There was people that called me to explain who, you know, that he, he really did do this. There was, mm. you know, sort of like contacts he got paid through um, Ministry of Defence and all sorts of things like that. So he so went was, to real lengths. He went to, to real see, lengths. To I mean, he would you. damage his body you know to show, show you being injured he would you know that there was the extreme lengths to which he went to provide the evidence that he actually did what he said he did and then eventually um, and this is where it gets rather sinister for you uh, because it has a huge impact on yeah. you he begins to ask you for money well after I was we were engaged for two years we were married for two years before he actually started asking me for money as well so and he was actually at the time working at a job where he was earning ten thousand pounds a month so it wasn't like he, he was short it, of yeah. money um, but basically Basically, he, he said that unsavouries had found out where we lived and they were effectively blackmailing us. They were saying that if we didn't come up with money, these people were going to steal the children and rip bits off them and send them through to the post unless we came up with money to pay them off. So you sold, so you sold everything? I sold everything Cashed I had. Everything. I mean, I didn't have £200,000 lying in the bank. I had a flat, which I sold. I had, you know, a life insurance policy, which I sold. I sold the car. I sold everything I could. And living Who in wouldn't to look fear. after their children? And living in absolute terror. Because, you know, by this stage, this is four years of brainwashing. This is four years. It's, it's looking back in hindsight. It's like who would do that? But it's it's not. It's, well, as it's we all find such out, a, a, you know, a gradual process. That you many, end up many, in. many women did. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so in April 2006, the police called and uh, and they said he'd been arrested on fraud charges. Uh, was engaged to another woman. Uh, his office worker, Denise, she'd reported him because uh, he'd used her credit card to buy mm -hmm. a Mercedes. Um, and then uh, they told you that he was a convicted sexual predator who'd assaulted an underage yeah. girl. You know, all of this really suddenly gets very, very, very Nasty. dark. Yeah, very, very dark, very quickly. And so from, from that moment, um, the, the girl there uh, that, that's mentioned called you. You got a phone call. Well, yes, I got I got a phone call from the other wife. Yeah. Um, and she said, you know, are you Mary Turner Thompson? And I said, yes. And she said, uh, are you also Mrs. Jordan? I said, yes. She said, I'm the other Mrs. Jordan. Oh, my gosh. Um, and uh, the conversation ensued from there, and she actually dropped everything and drove up to, to meet me. And we sat and talked for 12 hours and compared. I mean, we showed photographs of our children, and they all look the same. They all look alike. And my 15-year-old um, my daughter now has three 15-year-old siblings and oh we gosh. found we knew at the time of 10 different children by by four different women I think it was um, and uh, we now know of 13 by six different women so oh my gosh, and that's, these, that, that's the tip of the iceberg there will be far more well he um, he got 21 months for bigamy and fraud and he was deported No, he got 21 months for bigamy he got 21 months for fraud he got nine months for not registering address and nine months for uh, his firearms so he actually got five years in total Wow. Okay. so it's uh, it when he finally got out yeah and he's back in the States. He was deported stage. back to the yeah. USA in May 2009.